Hi everyone, let's go over the mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And as an example, let's do aromatic bromination. So that's done with Br2 and FeBr3. And what happens is we get a substitution reaction where one of the hydrogens on the ring is substituted with the bromine. That's the overall reaction. Let's run through the mechanism. Now on my exams, the first step will be optional. And um, you should at least realize what that is. That's the creation of the electrophile. And simply speaking, just look at what new set of atoms shows up on the ring. Whatever gets substituted, that actually is your electrophile. And in this class, all the electrophiles for electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions will be cations. And so that's what you need to know for the exam, is the first step creates Br+, plus, the brominium ion. And if you want to know how it forms, well, take your reagents, Br2 and FeBr3, and it turns out that iron bromide is a Lewis acid, which means it's an electron pair acceptor. And what I'll do is I accept one of the lone pairs from one of the bromine atoms, and it'll make it'll break the bromine bromine bond. And so you'll get FeBr4 that has a net negative charge. Uh, the bromine comes over as Br minus, and it leaves the other bromine of Br2 as a cation. And it turns out that's actually an equilibrium reaction because the brominium ion is quite reactive, not very stable. Okay, that's step one. What we need to do is remember, memorize our reactions, see what they produce, and whatever new set of atoms show up on the ring, that's your electrophile. And so, in general, on the exam, start at step two. Take whatever aromatic ring you're given, it's not always going to be benzene, and have one of the pi bonds on the aromatic ring attack it. And, you know, if you decide that you want to put the bromine atom up here, then whatever pi bond is connecting to that carbon, that's where you begin your arrow. So I decide I'm going to put up on top and take that pi bond and show how those two electrons that make the pi bond will now connect to the bromine atom. And it's a good idea to highlight the hydrogen here at the carbon that you want to make the substitution. Only one of the pi bonds goes away, so the other two remain in place. Hydrogen is still there during the second step but we add the bromine atom. And now, look at the ring and decide what carbon atom is missing a bond. Well, the double bond connected these two carbons together, and this carbon here has four bonds. The other one that was attached to the pi bond is missing a bond. That's what the carbocation is. This is our carbocation in intermediate. This carbocation is no longer aromatic, right? Because right here, at that carbon, that carbon no longer has a p orbital, so we lose extended conjugation throughout the ring. And we no longer have a huckle or huckel number of pi electrons. There's only four pi electrons here. The system's no longer aromatic. However, it still exists because of resonance. So to draw all the resonance structures, begin by redrawing what you have up here in step two. And now think about pushing that positive charge throughout the ring. And I think this is where having the hydrogen highlighted, specifically labeled here, will help you in placing that positive charge correctly. So right here, this carbon already has its four bonds. It's never going to have a pi bond, nor a positive charge at this carbon. It's got its four bonds, so it's done. Okay, to draw the first resonance structure, remember that always in resonance structures, atoms cannot move. Only electrons move. And so what I think about is having this pi bond adjacent to the positive charge slide over and move right up here. The other pi bond didn't move, so it's still in place on the left-hand side of the molecule. And I'll kind of inspect the new ring here and decide which carbon is missing 
uh, its fourth bond, and it's this one down here. This carbon right used this carbon here used to have four bonds. Now it doesn't because the pi bond slid over. Okay, copy over all your atoms. And now this pi bond had already moved once. This one needs its turn. Which way does it go? It goes towards the positive charge. So slide that pi bond over. Keep the other pi bond in place. Now inspect what you drew. Figure out where that new carbon that's missing a fourth bond is. It's over here. And there we go. Okay, we need to show all the resonance structures. And so at a minimum, every electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction has three resonance structures. But we'll see soon that other groups on the ring may cause additional resonance structures to form. And so to get full credit, we need to show those additional resonance structures also, not just these three. Now, because it's benzene, there are only three here. Okay, last step. Restore aromaticity. Four items that need to be satisfied. You need to have a ring. You need to have a planar, flat ring. And uh, let's see, you have to have extended conjugation, pi, sorry, p orbital on every atom in that ring. And finally, you have to have a huckle, huckle number of pi electrons. Okay, the biggest problem here is this carbon over here on that one of these intermediates and you get to pick any of those with curved arrows you can change any one of those resonance structures back to an aromatic ring students oftentimes like to pick the first one it's what they started with back here in step two but you can choose any of them don't have to pick the first one so redraw that what we need to have happen is this carbon needs to return to being sp2 right now it's sp3 it has four single bonds. To do that, we need to get rid of this hydrogen. We also need six pi electrons in a ring, and so we're going to use these two electrons in this bond to get up to six pi electrons. So that means this hydrogen has to, re has to be removed as H+, plus, so it can leave behind those electrons. Something that removes H+, plus is a base. H plus is an acid. So for the exam, you can just write the word base. That's a good idea to show a lone pair on that base. And then begin your arrow at that lone pair. And just draw it over to say, hey, the lone pair is now going to become a bond to this hydrogen. These bonding electrons here that used to connect the hydrogen to the ring are going to fall back and form the new third pi bond and restore aromaticity. So the hydrogen's gone, bromine remains. Those two pi electrons, sorry, those two pi bonds are still there, and then we have a new pi bond. And then the byproduct is a hydrogen connected to the base through what used to be a, a lone pair of electrons, now it's a covalent bond. Um, oftentimes your bases are negative, so I guess the balance of charge here. We'll start with the base that's negative, and now the, in, the intermediate, not intermediate, this uh, byproduct is neutral. Now, totally optional. In this reaction, we can go and identify the base. It's right here. FeBr4 minus the intermediate of the first step. It's actually the base. So the base is that equal to Fe Br4 minus, and it's one of the lone pairs on the bromine atoms. Let's pick one of these. It's one of these lone pairs that grabs that H plus. And then when it connects the H plus, the bromine attacks the H plus, this bond breaks away, and you get back FeBr3. And so there's HBr, it's one of the intermediates, of the pro by, one of the byproducts, and you restore the catalyst.
that's what we started with at the beginning of the reaction. We treated the reaction with Br2 and FeBr3. So you need a little bit of it because every step, at the end of every um, fourth step, you get it back and it reacts again. Okay, I hope that was helpful.